Member Schuster are in the door. Ben Sitcher is out. Member Schuster all in May and her help. Remember Sister Cuba still needs our prayers. Remember Jenny Wood and husband Larry. Linda Parks in remission from stage four cancer. Remember Sister Barb Bird. Remember Sister Sandy's daughter Bo. Brother Chuck Slant, the Crow family. Remember Gary McLaughlin Jr. Remember Brother James and Sister Jane. Remember Brother Charlie and his friend Earl. Let the Miller son Andy needs our prayers. Remember Chris Carmichael's wife, Vicki, having to undergo a procedure for bleeding brain. Remember Lori's sister, Linda, getting better. Sister Diane's granddaughter, Michaela, has genetic disease affecting her body needs our prayers. Remember Lori's cousin, Dwayne. Dwayne. Need salvation. Remember the YCA Stormy needs salvation. Anybody else have a request? Yeah, Jim, I'm very long. He's very good. Left shoulder or not. Anybody else? Yeah, Jim, Senator Linda, do you like to extra Lord and prayer? Remember the need request? Well, again, we'd like to say good morning to everybody. Uh, kind of a special day today. You know, Father's Day, oops, Mother's Day. Guess I better get that right. <laughs> Mother's Day only comes once a year, even though we either rejoice and are glad to have our mothers 365 days a year, or we put up with our mothers 365 days a year. Uh, those, those days are gone for most of us. We uh, look back and we remember some of those days when, Dog, Dog, Mom, get off of my case, would you please? And we kind of wish that some of those days we could have Mom back here to get back on our case. Um, I don't know about everybody else. I know in my case, just about every time she was on my case, I needed her to be, <laughs> needed her to be there. But at any rate, we're here to celebrate Mother's Day this morning. And Let's give the mother a hand. One of, my, one of my favorite stories about the other one was <clears throat> I went up to a gun shop up in Marion oh, a number of years ago, and I went in and I asked Rod there if he had a certain handgun. He said, yeah, I've got a couple of them. He pulled them up, and there's two of them, virtually identical. The only thing that was different on them was the serial numbers. Same grip, same color, same everything. I didn't have the money, so I waited until a couple of weeks later I got the money together and went back up to get it. Asked him if he still had those. He said, no, I've only got one of them. As well as six. He set it up there on the counter and opened it up. He looked at me and said, what do you think? I looked at him and I said, well, I want the other one. Rod looked at me, he didn't know whether I was kidding, uh, whether I really meant it. Uh, he, he, he had no idea, and I stood there and I tried my very best not to, but finally I cracked a smile. He said, you rotten son of a gun. <laughs> but, uh, I always loved that. I wanted the other one story. That's always a fun story. Anybody here this morning want to share something with us? Uh, what? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Plants? No, they're all chia plants. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to be first this morning to drag on the Lord Jesus? Never mind, go ahead. I'm going to stand up this morning and say, you know, it's not a it's terrible feeling. Terrible having mom at college. Not be able to love her for you. All hearts and minds clear. But Gary's going to come and bring a message this morning, so. When we think about 
mothers, a lot of times, we look at the kitchen. That's the most obvious place we normally see mothers uh, in the kitchen, uh, either cooking something or burning something. I had a friend that uh, we used to go to church with that um, she and her brother and younger sister, the four of us, would sit out in the car and, and talk during the last part of church service because the old Baptist church services were about two and a half hours long. And we would usually come out the last hour and we'd sit out there and talk. One day we got to talking about uh, the uh, upcoming um, communion service that was going to be in the next couple of months. And I just asked what her mother was going to bring. And she said, well, Mom probably won't bring anything. And I said, well, why? She said, Mom doesn't do the cooking. That's what you mean, your mother doesn't do the cooking. She said, Dad is the cook in the family. And she said, and, and this was the one that I always kind of remember. She said, when her mom and dad got married, her mother couldn't uh, boil water without burning. Uh, it was that bad. But um, there are a lot of mothers who, you know, they can't cook too good. Uh, maybe they can't clean clothes too good. And uh, maybe they can't sweep the house too good. But they are mothers. And that's the important thing. And Brother Gary had a couple of pictures up here that um, yeah. he wanted to share. And I told him that I didn't have them. And I thought he understood when I told him later that I did have them. At any rate, there's the first one, you know. And if you look at that poor mom there, she's got a little bit of a problem. She's got two problems. She's got one that she's trying to take care of. And one she's trying to hold. And one that's doing it. It's best to get her attention. And uh, the other one is this mom. Uh, she's got four, uh, excuse me, uh, four counting one pup there that's trying to get her attention. But you know, when you stop and think about mothers and everything, we ought to really be glad that God gave us mothers. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm glad that God gave his fathers as well, even though I, I didn't have one growing up. I had a stepfather, and we could go into that, but that's, that's not the best situation to go into, so we won't. I, I never had the privilege of having my own father there at the house who I knew loved me and cared for me. I've done my best to uh, take care of my son in such a manner that he understands I love him, that he is my most, well, yeah, he's my most prized child. Well, of course, he's my only child, but that's beside the point. He, uh, he knows I love him. And uh, we, we do have, again, we have fathers and we have mothers. But when you get down to the bottom line of it, children will mostly respect their fathers. There's nothing wrong with that. But the really deep, deep, deep love that they have, generally speaking, goes to mom. Because mom's the one that wipes the tears away. Mom's, mom's the one that wipes the snotty little nose, changed the diapers, um, gave them the hug when they lost the ball game or whatever else, you know. Mom's the one that always did the comforting type things. And it's, it's really, I think, uh, a good thing this morning to uh, be glad that God gave us mothers. Um, we often think in terms of the creation in Genesis chapter 1. It talks about the six days that God created, and on the seventh day he rested. It doesn't say anything about it later, but the truth of the matter is he did create two more things. One was mother, and he created mother before he did that. So when you think about parents, mom and dad, well, Mom should come first because she was the first. Mother was created first, and then nine months later, here comes Dad. Uh, it's like the little kid who was in grade school, and uh, they were going around talking. The teacher was asking questions about the students and so forth, and uh, she asked the one little boy, how old is your father? 
And the little boy looked up and said, he's six. The teacher looked at him and said, what do you mean he's six? He's got to be over now. He said, no, he's just six. Well, how is he just six? Well, I'm six years old, and he wasn't a father until I came along, so he was six years old. <laughs> A little bit of truth in that, you know. But, uh, and, and that really is the way it was with Adam and Eve. You know, Eve was a mother uh, for nine months carrying uh, their first child there. And uh, Adam was the father until that little dude got born. But uh, we're glad for the privilege that God did give us to have parents. Uh, our mothers carried us. We weren't like a robin that's, you know, an egg planted in a nest up there and somebody sits on it until so hopefully it uh, hatches and if it doesn't hatch, they go off and make a new nest and lay new eggs and don't worry about that other little egg. God gave us parents that cared for us, carried us, mom carried us, cared for us, watched over us, took care of us, gave us the things that we truly, wonderfully needed. And if you go down through the Bible, there are tons of different mothers in there. Mary, of course, is the most important mother in the Bible. And uh, some of you mothers um, might have thought it might, would have been a wonderful thing to have been the mother of Jesus, the perfect child. Let me tell you about the mother of Jesus, that perfect child. She had, we know, seven other children, and all seven of those other children were imperfect, Sister Linda. Jesus never did anything wrong. He never sassed his mother. He never, uh, on purpose, broke something or said something wrong or anything like that. But now the other seven are a whole nother bogey because the other seven are regular children. How many of you remember the day that you really wanted to get a hold of that child but you knew you better not? <laughs> uh, yeah, just better not. Because if I do, uh, that's going to be a problem. Uh, we as parents have been like that. And you know, the, the other part of that is that God sometimes looks at us and uh, if he was to get a hold of us when we were doing some of the things that we've done, um, it wouldn't have turned out too well for us. Uh, but he, he looked at us and he looked ahead in time and he realized that we are going to change someday. Uh, when Linda was, just to use her as an example, when Linda was seven or eight years old and being a real pain for her mom and dad, God looked down and said, I know Linda's going to get saved one of these days, so we'll let mom and dad take care of her. I won't. Because if God had, Linda wouldn't be here right now. But uh, mom and dad did. And, uh, I don't know if it was with the shoe or if it was with the ruler or the wooden spoon or maybe just a round stool in the corner. Um, Mom did everything except the shoe and the wooden spoon. In fact, Mom had several favorite trees out there in the backyard. And the bad part about those favorite trees is she'd give you a knife and say, go cut yourself a switch. And it better be a good one. Because if she has to go out and cut it after she gave you the knife to go do it, you're going to wish you had cut and done a better job. But... Um, God looks down at his children even before we are actually children of God. He looks down at us and he looks ahead in time and he realizes there is a day coming when we are going to give our hearts to him. And when that happens, it's going to be a whole different, quote unquote, a whole different ballgame. And I'm glad that he does take the time to look down at us watch over us, care for us, look ahead in time, and know that one day we are going to be His. I am always glad when I think about myself being a Christian, because being a Christian guarantees me that one of these days, Sister Judy, 
I'm going to walk in to heaven's far country. <laughs> I'm going to see Helen. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to see mom. I'm going to see my grandmother, my great grandmother, uh, my great great grandmother. In fact, I'm going to see both of my grandmothers uh, that I know of. Uh, they were both Christians. Uh, looking forward to them. My father's mother. My paternal grandmother I never got a chance to meet. Uh, she died many years before I was ever born. Uh, my niece, or not my niece, my cousin up in Mansfield has her New Testament. And it's a joy to open up that New Testament and see the places in there that she underlined or put little quotation marks around or put a little note out and they edge of the Bible or edge of the New Testament there, to see some of the things that were important to her. Uh, my grandmother, uh, Webb, was also the same way. She did the same thing with Bibles. I know there's a lot of people that, oh, no, 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 we're not going to write in the Bible. We're not going to underline anything. That's defacing the Bible. No, God gave you the Bible, and you, know, you do with it as you want to. If you want to underline it, help yourself. I do that all the time because I think it's important for me to understand and remember those things. And to look in my grandmother's New Testament and see the things that were important to her, knowing that she had God important in her life, and knowing that God is that important in my life, we have to just be glad and say thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing that one day I'm going to walk in I'm going to see her. I'm going to meet her. Um, I'm going to get to know her. <laughs> Brother Jim, you know, a lot of people don't think too much about that. I think of it often. Some of the people I'm going to get the privilege of being in heaven. And to know that they, many of those, you know, those women were mothers of, of some sort. And a lot of them are in my lineage going back. And to know that without them, I couldn't be. I'm just glad that they are the mothers that they were, that they're in my lineage, and we're going to get to be friends one of these days. Um, we may just take a 10,000-mile walk around heaven talking about how their lives were and how their lives went ahead and affected the next one down, that affected the next one down, that finally came down and affected me. Such a wonderful thought pattern to have, to know that these mothers that I have in my background, I'm going to get to see one of these days, but most of them, as far as I have been able to look and see, most of them are Christians. Some are questionable, uh, but at least most of them, I can pretty well tell, were Christians. And I'm going to get to see him. I'm going to get to walk with him. I'm going to get to talk with him. I'm going to get to go down to Jesus together with them. And we can hold hands and say, thank you, Lord, for what you did for both of us. You put us together in a family, and uh, you made us together as family members. Such a wonderful thought. But it's a great day today to be here this morning. And uh, you ladies, take your flowers home and I don't know, hang them in the kitchen, hang them on the front porch, plant them in the front yard, uh, don't put them where Charlie can get at them with his special weed killer. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, Charlie, as long as I'm here, you're not going to live that day. <laughs> That was an absolutely beautiful bright golden yard that you had there for a couple of weeks. That was, that was something different. But uh, you mothers, enjoy your plants. Enjoy Mother's Day. Have a great time. And uh, just be glad for the family that God has given you. You know, he looked down in time and gave you the privilege by choosing those that you have in your family. He could have chosen anybody else, but he chose these special people to be in your family. Uh, enjoy them, take care of them, pray for them, watch over them. Uh, all of the things that moms are supposed to do, just do it. And uh, 
be glad that you had the privilege of doing it. Okay? I don't know this morning how many of you may have a prayer request that you'd like to share with me, uh, or even if you do have one. But if Sister Sandy comes to sing uh, page 81, if you have a prayer request that you'd like to share with me, or if you'd just like to come up and pray by yourself, you can do that as well as Sister Sandy sings. Let's all stand.